so now um, we we have arrived to the interesting part of all of this is the texturing process is my favorite part and the most challenging too. I'll show you a little bit about how I think the base texture. I'll try to explain it. It it will also be very challenging to me. Uh, and after that, how I think my layers and blending layers. It's not very organized. It's very messy. But I hope it will help you. Uh, in a good way so okay I build my base texture in substance you can do it whatever software you want in Krita, in Gimp, Substance Painter, Substance Designer whatever you want I'll just show you here the logic of using the baked maps and this logic you can use in whatever software you want okay I start using the AO wave Multiply. Save it. Go to 3D code. And yeah. Okay. It's, it's cool to start, right? No, it isn't. Because maybe because it doesn't feel natural the way uh, the the shadows is working right now in the same way for everything. I like to give to the to the AO map ambiency uh, and, and work a little bit of hue shift on it so the way I do it is changing the color of the the AO so if I just do it in the unique AO I have it it will already change a lot the perspective for example if I change it to red, I will give to everything the same ambiency. But I know that it's not all the materials that receive the ambient the ambient in the same way. So, for example, to the for the for the gold, uh, uh, red AO work very well as a base. But to this white part doesn't match the concept, doesn't match the idea of the material that that the concept gives us. So so using this vertex map, vertex paint map, I will separate the gold for example. Separate the gold now and put it to multiply. And make it red. So I open this this window here and pressing Control U. Control U. So colorize. Cool. I think red is a cool color to define a little bit better the gold part. And look, I what I did here was cut everything that I selected here and paste in the new in the new layer. But you can just copy and paste and see how it it work. Like you can keep testing stuff. Like let's pretend that I still have the the original black AO above behind. I don't know <laughs> that you still have this this black AO. With it, the results kind of change. Like it's not it's not wrong. Like, but you can like work with the opacity and see how it can help you to achieve a more good result. You can see, like, from a base color perspective, it's way better now. And what I will do, will 
what I will do now is the same process to the other others materials. Let's do it. Oh, to the wings. I think that a purple could work better. Purple, reddish. Cool, right? Like what I'm what I'm doing here is basically work how the different materials could work in the same ambient and trying to give a hue shift to it. Like you can see here, the, the, the hue shift is not it's not happening. Like if I if I copy the the shadow and the light is almost the same here. It's like almost the same color, just a little bit darker. But if I do it here, the shadow and the light have a totally different hue. And this is the the interesting thing about the, the painting. So you, you need to be aware of this always. I'll do for the other materials here. Just it just give like a way better look to your base texture. Yeah. You can like test stuff. Uh, I kind of already knew the color I want in here, but you can like slide it and see what can uh, what can what color can fit better. Which color can fit better? Okay, now let's jump to to the ne next map. Okay, ju just the the white color here. Oh. 
Okay. Now let's let's use the normal object. Uh, the normal object, like how it is work, is like each of these channel can channels here is an axis from the 3D world. Uh, the red one is the from the side. Like if I'm not wrong, what is um, white is is to the to the is, is our faces turn it to the right part what is black our faces turn it to the left side and green is is the the idea is the same but working in the in the zx or yx depending on the software you, you use and the blue one is about the the depth so yeah, the the one we need here is the is the color that says about the things are turned to turn it up. So it's the green one. This map will help us to give light to our our base dasher. So I I tend to use it. Um, doing soft light you can test it and see what can work better for you and again I, I would make the same process not every every material here would use this 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 map you can use it as it fits for you soft light or hard light Like, see the difference? So I'll save it and send to. Okay. Uh, let's say that I don't want this this kind of light here in the whole purple material in my model. I can just. I can just erase it where I know that doesn't make difference to have it or if I think there's no need to be so brighten Okay, cool. So I have a lot of maps here with blending and my base texture here. And um, I just start to painting to do the painting right now. But let's say that I want quite a more accurate, I want a more accurate base texture. So using the the concept as a guide you can paint above the base texture the the base color texture this
cool. This is already a better base texture than just putting the AO with multiply above, right? <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention to mention like did you do you see that I like painted above the gold and I don't want it to make it. So what could be the solution for it inside 3D code? The the things about 3D code is that it has integration with Photoshop so I can like work at Photoshop and then go back to 3D code and paint that and then export to to Photoshop again. And when I save when I save the file here and in Photoshop the things update there in, in 3D code so it's very very good. Um, the reason we have this color based texture is to be easy to select the materials that you need. So what I advise here is to duplicate every single color here and transform it in in a, in a layer so it will be easier to select things in your in your 3d code file for example if i press ctrl and click on the layer it will select just every pixel that is uh, drawn in this in this layer so and if i if i hold control f i can show and hide my selection so what i'm doing here is not deselecting it's just hiding it so i can i can erase just where it painted in the gold part or I can make different if I do Ctrl shift I I invert the selection so I can paint just in the part that are selected right now so this was the logic I used it to to make the base texture there are other maps you can use, like the the curvature map, for example. It's very wise using it because it using curvature is very easy to make your texture weird. I forgot to export the, the change I did here. Okay, uh, the curvature you can use like in, in places, just in places that you think that would be cool. If you, if you use it in everything, so your texture it will appear a little bit auto auto automated uh, and this is not the result that we we want so you will will um, erase it in some some places just to not make it obvious I hope you guys have understood it If not, you can contact me, I don't know, and I'll try to explain it better. Okay, yeah. So this is the way I think the, the base texture and stuff. 
this was the base texture I did back in the past. Um, I would do it better now. I would um, use better the power of the base that I did. But I was kind of understanding how the workflow would work, so that's okay. What I'll do now is to show some of the the layers I use it, the blend modes. It's very messy, so please um, consider that I was also trying a lot of stuff. This was the first version of the texture. After I, I did it, I opened it to feedback and the file feedback I'll show uh, after after this. So let's let's do it. The the, the first here is uh, edit two. Probably that were that was a edit one before, but I I don't I don't know what I where is it now. <laughs> so okay, um, like a lot of the work I did also was I I think I didn't use um so well the the base texture I did uh because a lot of a lot of this edit layers are just painting above above the all other layers I did here and so okay this this edit one uh color four I don't even know what is this layer is doing maybe nothing <laughs> Okay, oh, okay, this color are kind of changing the saturation here in the, in the, in the arm. So, it's, okay, it's colored just one here, it's painted also other colors, this layer here. Um, I'm kind of discarding the the original original bacon to color it to two here. And, and you have to consider like these layers I didn't create it in a in a in a time in the right time like I, I probably did did this uh multiply one before all of this so i did probably did the multiply one first and then i did the edit and then i did so i did the uh multiply one two three and the logical between this multiplies is the mult multiply one have like the base stuff the multiply to an um, entry the details so like okay the the the, the multiply one is the rough the raw ao and the multiply two is the find details cool and the three is a little bit more of ao Here the layer. Oh, you can see like I'm using this logical of the tails and the yo in other other places. Yeah, a little bit more of multiply. Okay, so here is a, a folder just to solve the fur. So besides folder, I have fur edit one, fur edit two. 
probably a slight change. Color. This color jet is just a, a line, a AO line. It is brittle, the brittle. <laughs> it's the brightness of the brightness. <laughs> And then I have a brightness. Uh, color edit one. Okay. Here, color dodge one. Color dot two. Here I have more for addition, addition, cool. Holy shit, there's a lot of, of layers. This, this layer zero is just a bug from 3D code. This Prito. It means black, it's just a makeup in the face. It's kind of stuff like to maintain it separated because it's just a graphic detail. Oh. Multiply lights dark. <laughs> Fake fog, saturation, screen, okay, I probably use it, this, this would be named, uh, would be called edit three because I just painted materially there's n the there isn't any blank shape blank here sorry uh, okay um I did use all these these layers until I find until I think uh okay uh I'm safe enough now, like because using layers is cool to maintain your work non-destructive in a way, but sometimes it also can limit limit you. So I used this, and I and I had a lot of things that I were that that were a lot of things that were bothered but bother me a lot. Uh, mainly, probably, um, value stuff, like things that were too dark and the other things that weren't very, was kind of blending. Uh, I wasn't, I was trying to understand why, but I, I couldn't yet, so I, I opened it again to feedbacks from friends. Well, after receiving the feedbacks from friends, I unified all those layers in one and started to create new edit layers and evolved to correct some of those um, some of those things that were really bother me, uh, mainly um, saturation and and value. For example. Here was a, a place where I was really um, frustrated because this was too dark, but even so, it was blending so much with the with the knee. So in this in this first editing layer, I, don't, I already had solved a lot of these problems. 
as you can see. I continue to add in layer and doing changes. This color dodge layer would make a lot of difference because uh, one of one of my one of those feedbacks I received were like the things were um, the materials was working uh, too similar between them uh, in in the value side and the color side so. When I added this color dodge layer and started to work materials better, you can see things started to pop up and started to be different from each other the way the way they behave. It's probably back here. So yeah, this this was the the final result of my texture for the monster. You can see here after and before uh, my approach for the ball was a little bit different I wanted to be free from the layers as I did in the same in the first process because I was a little bit tired so I just painted everything in the same layer um, it was a, like a therapy process too, just painting and trying to understand the color choices, trying to understand um, light and shadows. And for the for the balls I did the same. I have here for example a layer just with blue color so I could get this nice Fresnel from this from this view I added some some more layers editing layers just to be sure And now let's multiply layer to down the values a little bit of where the, the monster would be standard. The last step was to set up everything inside Marmoset. Um, okay, um, let's start with the monster, the Capri. Um, the material I used was I needed to be unlit, so here in the fusion, uh, I think for for default it came in lumbation. Uh, you just check in and unlit. For the monster, it's just it. Uh, for the balls, I have a lot of them. I I have like three balls, one side of each other, uh, for, for each one of them, uh, to, to make this, this, this effect, um, like that, inside is, is darker, and outside has a, 
a slightly refraction. So I have a material with with refraction. It's where I control this index of refraction here. Uh, I have a material for the for the balls that are in the back because they were popping too much uh, because of the glossiness or the intensity. Yeah, because of the intensity. So I needed to make a second material for the for the back balls so it wouldn't be like too brighten like this. So yeah, uh, I had one material for the underball diffuse and one for this this internal material it, because in this in the underball diffuse I have also a transparency map a opacity map with Dieter basically what it is doing is to hide everything that is black in my in my map every every pixel and and I check it the deter deter option now, for example if you use cutout it will be very very weird so the best option was teacher. And the underballs is to control the these colors inside the ball. So I, I would like to make it in a more intelligent way, probably inside an engine. I could use a parallax shader, but I didn't know how to make it in, in Marmoset, so I needed to make a little workout um, and I have one material for the background this is sky material I'm not I'm not using it uh, this is the, the the one I'm using so what I did was put in the importing uh, mesh uh, and put it, it inside the main camera in the in the hierarchy. So when I move the camera, the background move together. So every angle I look, the background will not change. But in the in the final, it is just a just a plane here. And I set up some some settings here in the in the animation tab, uh, just to say like how how many frames my animation has, so I could export it animated. Also, I have some lightning in the sky. The the skybox I choose it was this one, but without the lightning, I wouldn't have the 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 level of detail of lighting in this in these areas. So I, I started to add light to to make this effect. So it light I added added a cool effect as well. Yeah, that's it, guys. I hope um, what I said here was can be very useful for you all. Um, any uh, any question about what I said? If I had uh, sounded too, uh, too confused, <laughs> I don't know, um, 
you can ask um and um yeah thank you for having me um till the next